But worthy of note also is the man Benson Idahosa, whom God began to raise from the late 60s into the 70s. A young man, member of Assemblies of God Church. There was a revival that came into the country through the Assemblies of God and blew around eastern Nigeria in the 50s and 60s. Now he was a Bini man and there was an Assemblies of God Church. He got born again and was a member of that church, working with Bata Company in Benin City. And then God's hand began to come upon him in a remarkable way because he was such a man of prayer. He was an unconventional man. He wasn't a very religious kind of person. He was a man that loved to increase and prosper. So one day he bought a motorbike. His pastor has communicated him for being worldly. Every church member was to ride a bicycle. The same pastor that has communicated him from an Assemblies of God church, the wife was pregnant, about to deliver, and there was nobody to take her to the hospital. So he came to borrow the motorbike. How does God vindicate the righteous? That's how he got reconciled. Then one day the pastor was preaching a message and preaching. All things are possible to him that believe. With God all things are possible. All the faith scriptures screaming and screaming. And at the end the young man walked up to his pastor and said, This thing you are saying, if it is true, that means it is even possible to raise the dead. The pastor said, yes, I've never done it. But if the Bible said it, then it is true. He said, okay, I'm going to look for one. And from when church ended in the afternoon that day till about 4, 4.30 in the evening, he rode his motorbike all over the new city looking for a dead person from street to street. Somewhere around 4.30, he saw a crowd of people and they said, one girl had just died. He said, praise God. He asked to pray for her. They didn't want to agree at first. After some time, they allowed him to enter the room and he prayed and this girl came back to life. That was the beginning of one of the mightiest ministries this nation has ever seen. He started a fellowship that grew to about 500 after some years and then God sent him to meet with this missionary in Elisha part. Elton. And it was Elton that arranged for him to be trained. Elton told him, the grace of God is upon your life, young man, but you need training so that you can have the word and last. So Elton arranged for him to go to Gordon Lindsay's Bible School in the United States of America. He traveled to Christ for All Nations at its very inception. First generation of students. But he never completed the Bible School because he just kept fasting and praying. He had such passion. His passion was for Africa. The Bible School was to last for two years. After one year, he came to Gordon Lindsay and said, why should I be sitting in a classroom when Africans are dying. Release me, let me go. So they had a private consecration service for him and he was the only student that actually saw God on Lindsay release them. Because before the others graduated, God on Lindsay had died. Came back to Benin City with a multiplied anointing. It is reported that those who came to welcome him at the airport, nobody could touch him. Everybody that stepped within 20 yards of him collapsed. And it was wildfire from that time on. His way of spreading church ministry and doing crusades at that time was very raw and to the point. It was another very forceful personality. You know God uses all kinds of people. Archbishop Benzin Idahosa was an unconventional man. In those days with the miracle working power of God, he would go into little villages and towns all over the present south-south of Nigeria. Sometimes without any publicity, we go to the market square and look for a blind or a cripple. He will put two drums and a plank. Hold you as if he's trying to give you something and drag you to where the plank and the two drums are. That's his platform. And he will heal you instantly. Open your blind eyes or get the cripple walking. A crowd will gather. He will climb the drum and preach the gospel. People will give their life to Christ. A church will start. But he was a man that believed in prosperity and God increased it lavishly. He was first in many things in Nigeria. He was the first Assemblies of God young man to ride a motorbike <laughs> in the new city. And God has communicated for it. He was the first Nigerian minister to use the Mercedes Benz car, for which he was criticized and called a thief and called many names. He took the fire. Now a pastor can buy an airplane and everybody is happy. In those days, you were called devil for attempting to prosper. He made it popular to preach in Babariga. In his days, every evangelist in Nigeria wanted to wear Babariga to preach. And some people didn't like that, but that was just Benson Igahosa. He was the first Nigerian minister to preach on radio, the first to preach on television, the first to own mass crusade equipment and move from city to city in Africa and even abroad doing meetings. During his lifetime, he ministered in over 130 countries. Many of those meetings were not invitational. He went into nations with his own money and arrested nations with the power of God. When it comes to signs and wonders, Pentecostal signs and wonders, particularly the gift of the walking of miracles. 
that the gifts of the working of miracles can produce healing results, they can also make sand to multiply. One of the last miracles that happened in Benin City before he died, they came to the building site of Benin Idahosa University. He had traveled for several weeks. When he came back, they said materials had finished. He commanded the materials to multiply, and they did. Archbishop stories sometimes will make you wonder whether somebody is not exaggerating. A boy fell from a three-story building and broke his skull on the concrete floor. His skull was cracked, his brain was pouring out, and they called for him. He gathered the skull and began to pray in tongues, and the skull joined back together. The boy didn't leave the hospital. I remember one famous story that happened. The World Council of Witches had their headquarters in Benin City at that time. There was a very vocal witch who was always boasting he was a witch and was the head of all witches. And then he announced that they were going to have their international conference in Benin City. Then Archbishop Benson Idahosa was already on television. So he went on his own TV program and said, you have heard that witches are coming to do their meeting in Benin City. He said, they will not come. I cancel that meeting. So this other man, they went to him to interview him. They said, this is what Benson Idahosa said. What do you have to say? The man laughed and said, even if Jesus Christ comes down, he cannot stop us. So Benson Idahosa went back on air and said, Jesus does not need to come down to stop this meeting. That's why I'm here. They now put them on set together. NTA Benin City invited the two of them. Panel discussion. He said, the meeting will hold. He said, the meeting will not hold. That's why I'm here. And then I saw Benjamin the house I turned and I said, be honest with you, there are no witches in the new city. The ones that were witches have run away. Even this man is not a witch. And he looked at the man and said, the Bible said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to me. If you are a witch, confess it right now and I will kill you right here. The man said he's not a witch. That was the caliber of man Benzina Idahosa was. I remember he had a guest one time many years ago in the 80s and the aircraft was about to take off from the new city. He ran to the tarmac because his guest had no ticket and waved the aircraft to stop and they had to open the door. He came, I have two, three guests. I want some of you passengers to get down and some people offered their seats. That's the kind of person he was. He was a very unusual man. He brought glory, honor, and attention to that city. People used to travel from all over the world to Benin City. Benin was the headquarters of the gospel in Africa in the days of Benzini Dahosa. Lagos was larger, but more people came to Benin because of a man's grace. Why must you walk in low voltage when you can have high voltage? Pay the price. Lose the phone you need to lose now. Consecrate. Sell out. God will use you. And I want to say amen.